As part of its commitment to ensuring the safety uh, of the community and promoting a safe and responsible, uh, the safe and responsible road use uh, across Queensland, the QPS will conduct a proactive uh, policing response um, to a motorcycle event that's planned for tomorrow. Now, the event that we're looking at is an annual event, uh, happens each year, attracts a large number of participants. Um, this, is, uh, this is one of those opportunities where the QPS is able to work in partnership across the organisation with uh, many of its operational units. We'll have representatives from the State Traffic Task Force, State Traffic Support Branch. We'll have people from the PSRT, a public safety response team. We'll have staff from Ta Task Force Hydra. So it very much is a united operation designed to ensure the safety of our road users during the course of this annual event. There'll be a large contingent of police. We make no apology for that. It's very important that we ensure road safety, uh, particularly in circumstances where we know there is going to be potentially some traffic disruption. Um, and we'll be there to respond to incidents and respond to traffic and community safety matters as they emerge. And of course our response is, is developed around the idea that it is very important to keep people safe uh, during the course of this event. I'll now hand over to Detective Inspector Gary Watts, who will provide you with an update from Task Force Hydra. Uh, thanks very much. Thanks, uh, Chief Superintendent. Just to let you know that uh, police will not be conducting an escort of the participants of the ride tomorrow. The police contingent is there to ensure the safety of the community and to ensure that all traffic uh, regulations are complied with. Unfortunately, past events have seen blatant, blatant life-endangering offences being committed. Such offences include the mass running of red lights, crossing double white lines, and excess, uh, riding at excess speed. Participants of the run have also, at times, conducted their own traffic control at intersections. This places all road users at risk. Now, this behaviour will not be tolerated and enforcement action will be taken. And I'll just uh, ask you, we've got some, uh, some footage that we'd like to show you. Uh, th that's a uh, previous run. And uh, the first uh, bit of footage there obviously depicts the mass running of red lights. Now, there is uh, hundreds of participants for that run. And as you can quite, uh, quite obviously see, they're running uh, red lights through, uh, through Brisbane there. Um, and it places all road users at risk. Uh, with respect to last year and previous runs, uh, I can say that uh, Traffic enforcement has been taken and, and the total of that is in the tens of thousands of dollars worth of traffic infringement notices has been issued. Do they pay? Uh, pretty much, yeah. Most of them are paid, yes. yes. Um, and do you know where they're going? Uh, at this stage we believe they're heading south of Brisbane and we're still in dialogue with the, uh, with the organisers. In previous years, have they been happy to tell police their exact words? In previous years there have been a reluctance to, uh, to involve the police in relation to the, uh, to the destination of the run, which makes our response all the more difficult to, to, uh, to manage. Why do they do that? Yeah, what, look, uh, effectively what, what this is, and the vision that you've just seen, uh, is, is really behaviour that is completely unacceptable to anybody, and in particular to other road users. Um, what we've seen on that vision and what we've encountered in other circumstances is nothing short of quite dangerous, uh, it, and it definitely puts other road users at risk. Um, the roads, as we know, are there for everybody to share. It's completely unacceptable to have circumstances where particular groups decide for their own purposes to take over a section of roadway. Um, that's, not what, uh, that's not what the Queensland road rules are all about. It's certainly inconsistent with the QPS's mandate to do all we can to ensure the safety of, uh, of road users uh, in Queensland. Which, which buggy gang is it and how many of them are you expecting to, to be on the track? Look, I'm not going to go into what, um, what uh, uh, motorcycle group we're talking about here. Um, certainly not my intention or, uh, or Detective Inspector Watts' intention to, to give any publicity to any particular motorcycle club. We'll simply say that it's a, a motorcycle club that's well known to us. Um, we anticipate that the people involved in this will be in the hundreds um, and so uh, we, we're responding appropriately with the with the uh, amount of um, resources that we're going to need to ensure a, you know, a safe, a safe um, experience for road users in and around that area. Is it possible they're heading to Surface Paradise? And is that what you're preparing for? Well, we have, um, we have many contingencies in place. Um, so we have resources adequate to this. 
Um, it doesn't matter to us, essentially, uh, in which direction the run, the run proceeds. Um, effectively, what we'll be a we're able to do will be to respond effectively with the resources that we have and the resources that we'll deploy. No, we don't, it's, it's not a case of doing any escorts. We certainly don't escort um, you know, groups of people, particularly if there's going to be behaviour that's unlawful, etc. Um, our, our primary purpose in all of this is to ensure that the roads are kept as safe as possible uh, during the course of this event for other road users. So will you be driving behind them or you know, just to keep an eye on them? We'll certainly be monitoring the, the progress of the run. Um, We'll be doing that from static locations, we'll be doing that from mobile locations, but we'll certainly be in and around the vicinity of this run to make sure that we can intervene if we need to, take whatever action we need to take, but primarily do what we need to do to make sure that the, uh, the other road users in Queensland are kept safe at that time. You said that you believe that they're heading south. Is that unusual? Is it usually a north run that you've seen in previous years? I'll let you. They, they travel all over South East Queensland at times. Do you believe, though, that they will head to Surface Paradise, at least on the way through? No, no. We, we, have no uh, we have no information to suggest they're going to Surface Paradise, but as the Chief Superintendent Morris said, if they do, then that's, that's up to them. We will manage them accordingly. Will New South Wales please be waiting on the border in case they vote? Is it, like, is it possible if we go into We uh, Look, we really wouldn't talk about that, um, <coughs> that arrangement. Um, that's something for the New South Wales Police, uh, certainly something that we wouldn't be comfortable with discussing. How many police are going to be well, we, it's, you know, our methodology is such that we wouldn't reveal precisely how many officers we're going to have, as you can understand, for pretty good reasons, not the sort of thing that we would be publicising. What we can say is that we have modelled a number of scenarios and we believe that uh, in all the circumstances we have appropriate resources to be able to effectively manage um, this event for the safety of other road users. Uh, well, once again, we wouldn't be prepared to reveal that. Um, we would say to you that we have a range of assets across the organisation, we have a range of, um, of uh, cooperative sections within the police service uh, and, and we will make those decisions about what's to be used but it's not the sort of thing we would, we would be discussing. That sort of law breaking behaviour that you've uh, shown on the video, is that unique to this particular event or do other runs um, uh, organised by other clubs involve similar it's certainly not, not unique behaviour to this particular event. Um, however, the numbers that, uh, that participate in this event are quite large and that what, uh, it makes it, from our perspective, uh, more dangerous than the other type of uh, behaviour in runs. Um, as you know, we police a variety of runs involving uh, outlaw motorcycle gangs and our uh, operations, our methodologies uh, are really dictated by the, the nature of the run and the level of law breaking. If road users are concerned or a community like a community town is well, I think the important thing is is around this this issue of road safety. Um, the issues that we are mainly concerned about are those. Uh, what the last thing in the world that we want to see arising from this event is the fact that someone is killed or injured as a result of some sort of incident that was avoidable on the roads. So, what we would be urging the people participating in this motorcycle run and for people who encounter that run on the way to please exercise caution with each other. Um, it's, it, it could easily be a very dangerous situation if a motorcycle was to come into collision with a vehicle, etc. There's as, as all sorts of um, uh, very bad outcomes. So we'd be urging everybody involved in this and people encountering it to, to be cautious. If people are particularly worried about behaviours that they'd like to report to the police, we'd urge police to contact Crime Stoppers. Um, and, uh, and, and, of course, to report the incident to, to Crime Stoppers and, and police will, uh, will respond. Previously, this club has engaged um, observers from the Robinson and Gorman law firms um, on their behalf. Why would they see the need to do that and would you expect them to do that again in this case? Look, uh, whatever strategies they, you know, any particular club wants to use, um, whether they want to engage uh, uh, legal representatives, etc., is you know, is really irrelevant to us. Um, as I said, our purpose will be there to, to ensure that, uh, that our roads are kept safe over that period. Um, you know, clubs want to bring lawyers with them, etc. That's entirely a matter for them. Um, irrelevant to us, we will be focusing on the road safety issues at hand. Are you expecting this to be bigger or smaller than previous ones? It really depends on the weather. 
um, when there is a, there is a fair bit of rain around at the moment, and it does that does have an effect on numbers. But they they still run the event, and they still have um, significant numbers. So if it's a good day, if it's a sunny day, do you expect it to be the biggest? Or? Oh, I couldn't comment on how many people intend to, to go, but we. Um, commonly look at around uh, 200, 250 people that may participate, depending on the weather that is. Would you describe this particular bikey gang as worse than other gangs in relation to dangerous behaviour on the road, or any behaviour? No, look, we, we wouldn't speculate on the particular clubs. Um, we wouldn't discuss them individually. Fact is, large numbers of motorcycles, close proximity to other vehicles, it's potentially a dangerous scenario, irrespective of what club is involved. Where are they leaving from tomorrow? They're leaving, for, they're leaving from just south of Brisbane. Um, it may be. Um, we are careful with a number of contingencies around that. Um, we've planned for, um, you know, for eventualities that things may change. Um, and if they do change, we'll be in a position to respond appropriately. Can I just make one comment there? You mentioned before about a particular OMCG. Uh, just to let you know, the makeup of this ride is the vast majority of people are members of the public. And we want to get it through to them that just because they're participating in a mass ride does not mean that they're immune from uh, enforcing the law or having traffic infringement notice issued to them. Um, Behaviour, as you've seen in the video, will not be tolerated by the QPS and we'll be taking action in relation to that. Sorry, so just to clarify, but you're saying the vast majority number of people who, who participate in this ride aren't actually, don't belong to a motorcycle club that is going on for fun? They don't, belong, they don't belong to an outlaw motorcycle gang. They may belong to a ver variety of motorcycle, social motorcycle clubs, but that's correct. They are, by, va by majority, uh, members of the public going along for the ride. Would you expect um, interstate members of this, this, uh, motorcycle, this outlaw motorcycle club to be attending? That may be a possibility. Do you know what time We're planning for any time during the course of tomorrow, um, and... Uh, uh, that won't be a time of our choosing, uh, but we'll be ready to respond when the uh, when the um, the ride commences. What is the fine for assuming your identity with a word of a um, traffic officer and stopping traffic? Oh, well, that would be a court imposed penalty, and it would be up to the magistrate to make a determination about that. But there is an offence for impersonating a police officer if that was to happen. Uh, then we could take action. There are a range of other offences that around. Has that charge been applied before? Because I mean, it was as in direct uh, Well, the, the, the key with impersonating a police officer is they've got to be impersonating a police officer. They've got to be doing something, wearing a, a uniform that I'm entitled to wear, etc., etc. If, if you're talking about just informal traffic direction, um, there are a range of offences under, the, under the, the, the traffic legislation around you know, placing a person's self on the roadway. Uh, you know, in an unsafe way. Um, uh, there's a number of uh, potential offences that would fall under that Act. But it, I think key to it is that if we have people uh, who, are, who are clearly breaking the law, putting themselves in dangerous situations, perhaps creating dangerous situations by their behaviour, then there is criminal sanctions for people who do that. There's all sorts of negligent uh, acts that can uh, uh, amount to, to, to injuries that will come from something like that. So. That's the reason that we want to be involved in this. We want to be involved to the point where we can observe, we can take action that's required, and we can ensure that the that the law is enforced um, um, fairly and impartially, uh, and that we'll be there to manage over all the aspects of this run. How much is it for uh, crossing onto the other side of the road? You know? No, just off the top of my head, I don't know. Has anyone ever been injured, either an outlaw or a member of the public, in this run? Yes, yes, there have been people who have been injured uh, as a result of these runs. There's been traffic actions between participants, and certainly that's what we are attempting to do tomorrow is to prevent that from happening. Mm -hmm. um, I, I can't rightly say. I, I, I believe so. motorcycle accidents inherently uh, are dangerous, so uh, I couldn't comment on the injuries, though. Okay, thanks. Uh, yeah, I believe oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yes. Um,